Hello everyone, uh, super excited to be here today. So we're gonna talk about Loki uh, and how it scales. Before we start, um, I just wanna uh, remind some of the staff. So the webinar is going to be recorded. So don't worry if you missed the beginning or if you have to go, everyone's gonna receive it um, at the end uh, and you will be able to watch it again at your own pace. Um, and we'll take question at the end of the talk. So stay with us. Today, uh, we're gonna have me and Owen who's gonna talk. Both of us are engineers on the Loki project. And uh, we actually been working like since the beginning on Loki, we were like both of us um, uh, engaged in the project straight from the start. So I'm gonna start, this is gonna be the agenda for today. Um, I'm gonna um, go through what is Loki. I think it's always good to remember what we're talking about and why we created Loki. Quickly dive into LockQL. It's always good to um, have an idea of how you can query uh, Loki and how you can use it. And then obviously Owen's gonna take over and then let us know what's new in Loki this year. All right. So what is Loki? Um, Loki is a horizontal, horizontally scalable, highly available multi-tenant log aggregation system. Um, and it has been built for logs, specifically for logs. Um, it means that also we built a project that will be able to scale with, accordingly with your uh, workload and that uh, data is replicated so that if there's an issue within the cluster, your data is still available. So Loki is also obviously an open source project like everything at Grafana that has been started uh, in 2019 at KubeCon. Um, if you want to create an issue, if you have an issue, if you have a feature request, um, if you just you know simply want to contribute, uh, feel free to add up to the repository on GitHub and 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 work from there. Uh, just to give you an idea, since 2019, that's the ramp up of styles that we have on GitHub. So the the project is popular and still being adopted largely, and still getting even more popular every day. And we actually are committed. So I put that slide because I wanted to make sure that everyone understand that after three years, the whole Grafana team, uh, the whole Loki team at Grafana is growing, still committed. A lot of people are working on the project and we have a lot coming up and we always want to bring Loki. We think Loki is the future of Loki. Why? So uh, why did we create Loki? Um, so we ask around, uh, ask ourselves, you know, what is the three biggest challenge with existing logging solution? And that's the three that we, you know, stand out the most. It's very hard to operate, right? It, you don't know what to do with all the disk. It's very difficult when you have a lot of logs to manage all those disks, especially if it's not in the cloud, uh, especially if it's not uh, in Kubernetes. It can be very, very daunting to operate a logging system. It's also very expensive to scale, like especially if the system is uh, resource intensive, it's going to be expensive uh, in terms of CPU, memory, disk again. And then finally, we haven't found anything that was well integrated within the Grafana ecosystem. So we set ourselves to fix those three problems and we wanted a system that is actually easy to operate um, and easy to operate as you can just use a single binary like a Prometheus um or if that's you know and that will already start working for your cluster and start receiving logs and then you could still scale in in the future if you need to but start simple we wanted something that um is definitely cloud native cloud native works with containers works with community service discovery all of this but not only it should also work for bare metal. There's a lot of people that doesn't use Kubernetes. I uh, want to make sure that you can use Loki wherever you are. And then finally, the local file system, I wanted something that works on disk very simply, uh, that doesn't need a connection outside of the world. Uh, but also, you know, as you scale, maybe use a cloud storage. That, um, that means that you don't necessarily want to handle disk redundancy, managing disk and all of this. You want to defer to the cloud and to the people who know how to deal with this. We wanted something inexpensive, um, you know, and, and for that, we decided to do a big trade-off that I'm going to talk about after, which is we built a system that is index-free. We think the index is actually a part that can be 
uh, very indexing is part that can be very expensive. And that's one, one of the reasons there were no project out there that was doing index free logging. And then we wanted something written in Go uh, because it's inexpensive, it's fast, and also because we're a big Go shop at uh, Grafana and we want to make sure we can reuse a lot of code and then share uh, any uh, library that we have. And then finally, we wanted something that is fully integrated. So being able to create dashboards, for query for logs within Grafana, uh, we wanted something that is easy to correlate with metrics that you have in Prometheus, something that is also easy to correlate with other signal like tracing, maybe. So how does that work? Loki, the big trade-off that it does is that it does not index the text of the logs, only the metadata, which we call stream, and then index the labels and the timestamp. And that's what makes it so cheap to operate. Right, compared to other systems that will index everything so that they can reply very quickly when you query for a world. So to give you an example of how that looked like, um, this is what a log line in your system, like an Nginx application could look like, like get about and probably more than that. The only part we're going to index is from where the from where the logs come from. Here it's like instance one on one and an Nginx application and the timestamp. Everything else that uh, is in the log line will just be compressed, but not uh, indexed. So that means when we query, that's where we're going to have to scan and then search, but we don't index at ingestion, ingestion time. Now, what, that, that is what makes Loki super powerful in terms of ingestion. So to give a bit uh, an idea of the scale, uh, one of our cluster that we run at Grafana for our customer, um, currently ingest two terabytes of uh, logs per hour, which in my opinion is massive. Uh, there's 18,000 customers on that uh, cluster. Um, and all those customers, they query around 12 petabytes of data per week. And the fastest query that I could find in the number that I was looking yesterday uh, is 80 gigabyte per second. So that's one of the clusters we run a couple of them. Actually, we run a lot of them in a lot of different regions around all the world, the, around the world. Uh, but I wanted to give some number about what you know, what is a one lucky cluster can go. Um, so a very high level architecture. It's very high level just to give you an idea of you know how lucky uh, how it's working. So you usually have an agent. In that case, I um, I uh, said that it would be Pomtail, but you can use whatever you want. You can use FreeNB, FreeNB, uh, Logstash, Vector. We kind of like support them all. Uh, you can choose whatever you think is the best for you. We have an opinionated one, which is Pomtail. And the reason why we have Pomtail is because it's uh, very much uh, integrated with the graph and ecosystem and the service discovery. So you're going to get the same labels as your uh, series and metrics so you have an agent on the node the agent tails the files and then send batches of the file to loki um, and then after you can query using either grafana or log cli the logs directly log cli is just you know if you use most most sre or developer may prefer cli tools so that they can maybe after do some pipes uh, so you have the two options here so this is a great example this dashboard here is a dashboard for Nginx. It has been only built with logs, and that's it. Uh, all the metrics you can see here have been created straight from Loki using logs. And what I like about the dashboard is that it actually shows you know, the power of Loki. You can build dashboard with metrics, with a map. You can even show uh, the logs themselves. Uh, and that's what was missing in Grafana. So before um, I finish this part, just <clears throat> Just a quick uh, introduction to uh, the query language, which we call LogQL. If you are uh, familiar to Prometheus, this is heavily inspired by Prometheus, by the way, uh, which is the, the language is called uh, PromQL. Um, so usually in PromQL, when you want to query for a, a metric, you have a metric name in the be beginning, and then within curly uh, <clears throat> bracket, you have the workspace, the workload that you're trying to uh, target. In Loki, it's pretty much the same, except that we don't have a metric name. So you just have the curly bracket 
and then the labels that will target uh, the workload, like a namespace or namespace and application or an application across multiple namespace. And that's how you get all the logs for those applications. Obviously, that's not enough. You know, if you're using Elasticsearch or Lucy, one of the most powerful features being able to search for a world, Loki can do exactly the same by using those operators here, the pipe equal and then the pipe not equal and then regex. You can run regex with a tilde operator. Um, so the only difference, so it's pretty much the same. The only difference is that Loki will actually scan at that time the data instead of using an index. We also have like an IP uh, search. And it's not, that's, that's not all. There's like way more feature. I'm not going to dig too much into it, but there's a lot of other feature that allows you to extract directly data from the log line, like a latency, and then use that as a predicate for uh, searching for the logs. You can also rewrite the log line, uh, as you can see. Um, if you have a big blog, uh, blob of JSON that's very difficult to skim through uh, on screen, then maybe you can rewrite that to only output the information that you want. And finally, you can create metrics, right? That's, that's what I was um, showing you on the dashboard earlier. You can create metrics to count the amount of error, but also if you have, for instance, the request time logged for every request, you can get the quantile. You can get the P99 for that request. And that's it. So uh, I'm gonna take it, uh, give it to Owen. Owen's gonna talk about um, what is new and thank you. Hey, Cyril, thanks. Today, we're going to get to talk about some pretty cool stuff that's new in Loki, particularly the storage layer. And within the storage layer, we're going to talk about the index subcomponent. Now, as a brief refresher, the storage layer in Loki is composed of two pieces. One, the index, which is responsible for routing and filtering down to the data that you actually care about. And then two, the compressed logs and object storage, which aren't really going to be a focus of this talk. Now as a, a brief refresher on how this is actually queried, what this looks like, we use the Prometheus labels to quickly find the data that we care about, to quickly find those logs. In this case, cluster equals US central, narrows the set of logs down to around one terabyte data in a 24 hour time period. But notably you can mix and match these label matchers. And so you can use something like this query to turn that one terabyte into 10 gigabytes. So you can incrementally refine your question to only you know, filter out everything that you don't need. And in this case, you know, 10 gigabytes is 1% of the terabyte. So you can remove vast swaths of, of, of unnecessary logs. So this is what it looks like in one of the clusters that we run. 10 terabytes of logs generates around a 200 megabyte index using the old index, which itself is around a 50,000 X you know, difference. So the index is 50,000 X smaller than the, than the logs themselves. And the new index will be 10 times smaller than that even. So it will allow us to query more logs, even faster. So why now, all right? Why a new index, why now? And why did we do that as opposed to any of the other things that we could have changed in Loki? Well, the answer to that is largely to stay ahead of the, the curve here. Loki is, is growing. The community adoption in particular has made this project incredibly successful and has been it really, really cool to see and be a part of. So thank you all. It's been great to see back in the early days, people running their first Loki clusters in the Grafana public Slack. And now these days seeing those same people contribute back either in code or by helping other you know, newer joiners who are running their first Loki clusters. And we're getting to the point where we're starting to see some really, really large ones out in the wild in addition to what we run internally at Grafana Cloud. So back from the early days where we were running gigabytes a day to the terabytes a day that we are now in terms of ingestion to the petabytes in the future. It's really important that we make sure that Loki continues to work as well and do so at much higher scales, right? The next couple orders of magnitude. 
So if you're scouring for logs on your Raspberry Pi, for instance, or if you're looking for them across an entire data center, you should be able to run those queries quickly in seconds, not minutes. And that's important because you need to be able to answer questions about your infrastructure, about your applications in a way that allows you to incrementally refine a hypothesis to find the answers that you need. And so looking forward into the future, it's important that Loki can query you know, 100x of the data that it does today, but do it in the same amount of time that it does it today, or even better, do it faster. So Loki does love Prometheus, that's for sure. It's been the tagline for a very long time, like Prometheus, but for logs. And one of the pieces that underlies Prometheus itself is called TSCB. And in particular, we've taken the index part of that to build on top of, so you don't have to start from scratch, right? We can again look to Prometheus for inspiration. Now, notably, this is this doesn't just power Prometheus and Loki. This also powers other projects like, for instance, Grafana Mid Mirror. But it's very it's, it's a very specialized uh, uh, index for the type of queries that we run, these label-based queries. So it's smaller and it allows us to query faster and allow us to operate at a higher scale than we do today. Now we've also added some of our own things into the mix. So what I'm calling index shortcutting here, um, notably the Loki based TSDB index is 10 times smaller than the index that we had before, but we've actually been able to pack more data into it as well. So these extra bits of information help us do all sorts of cool things. And this is one of them. So historically, Certain queries, particularly certain types of metadata queries, would need to go to the index to, to use that to route to the logs they care about, to go unpack the logging data, and then you know return to the user. And so for certain types of queries, we, we've been able to bypass that now, which means that we can run this off of the index alone. So not only does this mean that we'll be able to do so orders of magnitude faster, you know, moving you know seconds to milliseconds, but also, this means that it, we can do so cheaper. We don't need to unpack or, or go and fetch all this logging data. But don't worry, for most queries, we still need to, to query the logs themselves, and that's not going to change. And so Loki has historically used parallelism to make this fast, and it still does and continues to. But the way in which we, we choose how to parallelize is changing. And that's one of the things I'm most excited about here, because it's very easy to over parallelize small queries and to under parallelize large ones. Historically, we've been able to kind of choose this with a heavy handed approach by either um, controlling this at a tenant level or at a cluster level. But what the new TSCB based index will allow us to do is to actually determine this by the request itself, which means that if you're a super large tenant, but you want to run a small query, we don't have to waste all this these extra resources trying to parallelize data that doesn't need to be. And then conversely, if you're a small tenant, but you want to run a large query, that's fine too. So it's kind of what I'm calling our, uh, this is our Goldilocks moment, making sure that we parallelize just the right amount for any particular query. And more parallelism when you need it and less when you don't. Now, notably, while doing all this, we've still been able to stay true to the, the principles of Loki. And so what I mean by that is Loki runs on top of commodity hardware and it's backed by object storage. And those were very deliberate choices. It's so that it can be cheap enough that you don't have to throw out the signals with the noise. You can log everything that you have, everything that you need to. And then if you're in an outage situation where you realize that you need that data later, then you can go and extract it. And so we're really focused on being cost effective and fast and reformant with less resources. So one of the things that this 
better query planning, for instance, that we just talked about allows us to do is if we can better parallelize, that means that we can also build more predictable workloads, you know, be less likely to run out of memory on our query or subcomponents, for instance. And in turn, that allows us to run leaner and still give better quality of service for our clients, whether your clients are tenants in you know, Grafana uh, Cloud SaaS Loki, or if they're the team next door at your organization that you're running Loki for. So if you want to try this, it's not yet available, but we're getting close. This is as easy as adding a new entry into your schema configurations. Now, this has been with Loki for a very, very long time, um, but it's definitely worth mentioning as a, as a really large advantage and kind of operational benefit of, of how Loki works. So in this example, we added a new schema configuration that says starting in 2022, you know, take advantage of these new T, this new TSDB index and the optimizations that it, that it uses. But what makes this really powerful is that this is an additive thing. So Loki will see that before 2022, there is another index to use, you know, another storage configuration. And so it will query across those two transparently and combine them, merge them before responding to the user. And so you can add these things as the project releases new optimizations and be able to take advantage of those very easily. And one of the other benefits here is that this allows you to do zero downtime um, upgrades very, very easily, which is really important when you need to run a highly available observability tool. So that's, I guess, the end of it for the uh, Loki TSDB part of this talk. But there's one thing I'm still really excited about announcing here that's been in the works for a while since 2021, and that is Loki is getting or has gotten a native Kubernetes operator that's been donated by Red Hat to the Loki project. This is had a number of contributors and is, has a lot of features that I'm not going to go into here, but it does have the 0.1 release very soon. And you can try it out by either running it on your own Kubernetes clusters yourself or by the technical preview available in um, OpenShift logging. So there's been a lot of contributors involved in this project, uh, notably from companies like Red Hat, Grafana, InVision, and IBM. Please let us know if you're interested in using this and contributing to it, that sort of thing. You can come in and chat about it either in the Loki Operator Dev Slack channel on Grafana Public Slack, or by using the, the SIG slash operator GitHub label on the Loki project itself where the operator code lives. And that is the end of the talk today. Thank you for coming. And we're looking forward to seeing what questions you have and hopefully we can answer some of them. All right. Thank you, Owen. Hey. Uh, how, how you doing, Owen? I'm, I'm pretty good today. I uh, realized <laughs> I'm wearing the same shirt that I recorded that one in. So, nice. So, like, I'm a cartoon character. Um, <laughs> let's see. We've got a couple, couple questions we can go through. So I'll just fire them off at you, Cyril, and you can try your best to answer. Yeah. Um, let's do that. First one I see is what is the best way to handle a, a, a stack trace log in Loki? Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, so I think the the problem with stack trace is that Loki will or Pomtel, if you're using Pomtel, will automatically um, split them into like different lines, uh, and that can be really annoying because the order is going to be all shuffle in reverse order, and so reading the stack trace is going to be annoying. I mean, this is like something that we at Grafana struggle also when we have like panic in Go. You know, the the everything is like uh, backward. Um, so the way you can deal with that is Pomtail has a pipeline stage that can um, do multi-line. So you, you can tell the pipeline stage that this is uh, the regex to use for finding the beginning of a line, and it will um, try to bundle up 
all the line of a stack trace into a single line and so it, it will look like uh, it's better. Um, hopefully that works. Otherwise, if it doesn't work for you, just open an issue and we'll look into it. Yeah, that was a lot of words to say, go look at the multi-line stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's there. This That's basically why this was largely invented to handle stack traces. Um, so take a look at it and see if there's a, if that suits your needs. All right, so the next one, does Loki distributed and the Loki simple scalable um, modes of running, uh, the, I think this is targeting the Helm chart specifically, Yeah. support Cassandra or Azure storage for both index and chunks. I can take this one. Um, yeah. Yes, it does. Although I would highly, highly suggest using object storage for both the index and the chunks. That's basically where all of the current and future development lie in Loki. Historically, yeah. when we were, you know, a much younger project, we offloaded a lot of this to the uh, to things like DynamoDB or Cassandra, particularly to handle the index. But now that we've built a lot up around doing that in object storage, it's cheaper. It also tends to be faster as well, and it'll be, you'll get all of the improvements moving forward. So unless you have like a team running Cassandra for you, I would suggest using the uh, object storage backends. All right. Um, is there a way to migrate from uh, Bolt TB shipper store to TSCB? Yeah, I mean, you just uh, you just explained that in your uh, in your presentation. But yeah, we're gonna use the same uh, configuration um, as we did before for migrating from one schema to another or from one provider, like one from GCS to S3, if you want to. Uh, and so you're gonna be able to use that to to migrate to TSDB. Uh, it's gonna basically say. The, you know, starting from that point in time, start using um, TSDB as a B index, and then we're gonna query. When you're gonna query, you're gonna be able to query over both of them. Yeah, that's one of my kind of favorite things about Loki. Actually, um, is the ability to say, you know, starting tomorrow, I want to get all the new advantages for the that the new release exposes. In this case, TSDB, and Loki will kind of transparently, you know, query all of the old logs until you get to a certain point, and then after that, it'll you know, read everything in the new format. So you can get all these benefits of like zero downtime up, upgrades, which is really, really important. Um, let's see, when is index happening if it's not during ingestion, Cyril? Well, it is It is happening during ingestion, yeah. uh, but it's happening in memory. And then we flush version of the, the, the what we have in memory to a file, and then we upload that file. So yeah, we, we do have a inverted index in memory and we flush it to disk. Yeah, the index in Loki is kind of like a, a very small routing layer. And a lot of the work is still done by brute forcing the logs, but done in a way that allows you to kind of um, discard a lot of the data that you don't care about initially, and then kind of brute force them in different ways, which ends up being very, very powerful and parallelizable, which makes Loki fast. Um, okay, what do we got next? Does the upcoming Loki operator for OpenShift mean that OpenShift's native log monitoring will be moving to Loki? Um, from the current Fluentd plus Elasticsearch, that I think we have to be careful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't work for OpenShift, so I'm going to not answer that. Uh, I know that it is in what technical preview now, uh, running with the Loki backend, and um, there's been a, a lot of work to kind of help bring this into the Loki operator and then into the Grafana repo itself recently. Yeah, the Grafana. Loki. I've yeah, I think the fact that they're investing is a good sign that um, they want to maybe uh, put Loki uh, in front of the um, offering. Um, well, I have another final one. Will the TSDB index be released? <laughs> um, that really comes down to me now, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, I'm kind of we're going as fast as we can, we can at the moment, but it's still probably a little bit ways out. I think it's mostly kind of feature complete internally. Uh, we need to kick the tires for a while to feel comfortable rolling it out to, to kind of end users and then to release it as you know non-experimental. But you can run it right now if you use the main branches. Although you know, I, I would not suggest doing that on production data yet. All right, last question, uh, Owen. Okay. Um, the right one. Let's see. Are there any maximum number of combination of Prometheus labels? That's a that's a hard one to answer in one minute, Cyril. 
Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> like, a, you know, technically there is not, but then you're going to enter into some t trouble if you have too many uh, combination of label, as we call the cardinality. You I mean, the, the rule of thumb should be use your workload tags for the labels. That's it. That should, you know, that's what you should be using. It's very hard that you want to use something else. Yeah, so the label should tell you where the log comes from, you know. A yeah. Cloud provider, a cluster, what application, you know, In space. node machine, that sort of thing. Cool. And I think that we're getting kicked off. So I think that's, <laughs> yeah. the, that's the end of it today. Thanks everyone for coming. And thanks uh, everyone. Uh, enjoy using Loki. Take care. Mm -hmm.